Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Miles, BC. Well, we're starting into the second week of Advent, the second to four weeks leading up to Christmas. And I'm just glad that you could join us today. Today is Monday, December the 7th, 2020. And we're entering the week of peace. Now, the first week, as we know, represented by the lit candle here, was of hope. The hope that we have in Christ Jesus and the incarnation of, of the Messiah. Now this week, it is peace. Now we light candles as a testimony of the power of light over darkness. It's a simple but profound act that visualizes it for us. As we light the second candle today, the second candle of Advent is the candle of peace. And we anticipate Christmas. We've got to remember the, the root of what Christmas is all about. You see, the Prince of Peace has come to us. The Prince of Peace has made a way for us who are at enmity with God to have peace with our Heavenly Father. Let us remember this week as we reflect on Christmas our need for a Savior and let us be thankful for the peace that guards our hearts and our minds in our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this time of Advent where we can reflect upon truth, the truth that sets us free. We thank you, God, for being our hope. And Lord, we also want to thank you for bringing peace to a world that's filled with chaos. You bring peace to the hearts of those who believe in you. God, I pray that your peace would resonate in us this week as we reflect on Christmas, as our hearts are filled with thanksgiving for you, author and perfecter of our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. So when we look at Christmas, and we look at all the prophecies and all the Old Testament um, stage setting that took place leading up to the coming of Christ. God speaks to us through King David in Psalm chapter 27, verses 1 and 2, where he writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. And then we read a little further on in the same passage in the Psalms, in verses 13 and 14. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. From the time of King David, people waited a very long time to see the fulfillment of the prophecies of the coming Messiah to be fulfilled. The prophecy written in Isaiah chapter 6, 9, 6, and 7 was written some 600 years prior to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. We read, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his kingdom and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And on that first Christmas morning, when we look some 600 years later, when Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, we read in Luke chapter 2, 13 and 14, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with an angel, praising God and saying, with the angel and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. 
See, this world is filled with conflict. The world apart from God really has no true peace. You know, that was something that our culture pursued and tried to find outside of God back in the 60s. And we don't see that landscape today. Today there is conflict, there's turmoil. But the scripture reminds us that true peace is born of God. True peace comes from the Spirit of God dwelling with those on whom His favor rests. Well, how do we gain favor with God? We gain favor with God by submitting to His call to repentance, to allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to be the Lord of our lives. When we bow the knee of our heart to Him and we submit to His authority over us, the Prince of Peace enters our lives and He dwells within us. The Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3.15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. God calls us to peace. God calls us to live in the abundance of His peace. And He provides it. You see, when we turn our eyes towards Jesus, we turn our eyes to the Prince of Peace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. The Prince of Peace calls us to look towards Him as we approach this Christmas season. When we look at everything, the way it's locked down the world with its COVID crisis, there is a light that shines in the darkness. The peace that surpasses understanding that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May God grant you and your family His perfect peace as we come into this Christmas season. Amen. This is Food for Thought.